Without a doubt, that is what has been said by people here in Port Elizabeth. During the 1970s, there was a, 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 a rugby team called the Sanskripians. was actually a black rugby team. And at that time, which was during the apartheid time, what the Watsons did, they were actually went and played for this rugby team, which was not something done during apartheid times. I mean, this is a white family, a white man who says, you know what, I'm not going to play for the white team. Actually, I'm going to go form part of the black team and play for, back, for that specific team. So when we spoke to people here, especially people from the rugby fraternity, they had the same thing to say, that you know what, this is a, a, a group of a, a family that stood up for black players who believe that you know what equally as they are talented white players they're equally talented black players and we're going to stand aside the black players and showcase that they too have the potential to represent the country on a national perspective An interesting man that we met uh, last week when we travelled to Alicedale to get a feel from the people where he grew up was a man by the name of Hagi, who I feel described him very well. He said that Gavin Watson was a very upfront person. If you did something wrong, he would tell you. But then two minutes after that, the same man would, be, would say to you, not come back, this is where you did wrong, and then totally forget about that. So very aggressive, but very opinionated. But with that said, a man who equally had a good heart, who would reprimand you for doing wrong, but then two minutes later would forget it, and then would say, let's just go have a drink. I forgot all about that. So a very decisive, opinionated, aggressive, but also a man with a good heart, a giver, many have described him as. Yes, uh, former President uh, Jacob Zuma, we actually did hear yesterday that he had arrived in Port Elizabeth and we were anticipating uh, his presence at this specific funeral. I'm not too sure exactly in what capacity he came, but perhaps on a personal perspective, yes, he is here. We also uh, saw activist Mkuseli Jack, who was an activist during the UDF time. Then we also saw Charles Magula, we, saw, we also saw the wife of our former struggle hero, Chris Honey, as well. So a lot of people from the ANC here to support Gavin Watson's family. Uh, you understand why that during the 1970s, Gavin Watson formed an organization called the, the Concerned Citizens Organization, which was focused on teaching people the importance and the need to work with the ANC and not against them. So the ANC, I feel, really taking ownership of Gavin Watson, going to the extent of calling him one of their own and the importance of coming to celebrate his life at this funeral. of security detail as well and the coffin has made its way inside very somber mood with the family emotional at this time Balance Watson, brother of Gavin, sits in front of As you can hear, the choir continues to sing. It is said that this choir was very close to Gavin's heart as well. It was called the 16 Men. Speaking to the spokesperson of the family earlier, he said they were expecting a number of people. In terms of how many, he estimated about a thousand as the venue takes 1,200. We are expecting to see some high delegates of the ANC as well. We were hoping to also see um, former business partners and business associates of Gavin Watson. And it looks like the program is just about to start.
but the gentleman, welcome. My name is Papali Shabani. I've been asked to be the program director for today. Um, thank you very much for, for your time and your attendance here this morning. Where we come from, how we were taught, how we were led over the past 21 years of spending time with Gavin Watson, one of the things that become a, a, a way of doing things where we come from is that in everything we do, we seek first the kingdom of God. Um, so for us to be able to do that, is Pastor Francis here close by? I'm going to request Pastor Francis to come and open for us in prayer, and we can get this uh, event event on the go. Can I request all of you we stand and pray? Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you today. We bless you for this wonderful day, Lord, that you have brought us together to celebrate our brother. We bless you, O oh Lord, that we can say at last our brother has gone home. We bless you and we thank you for the presence of your spirit. And we pray, O oh God, that your spirit will lead and direct every program today. In Jesus' name, amen. Thank you very much, Pastor. Um, again, just a quick, uh, some quick uh, ground rules for us to be able to uh, make sure that uh, today goes as quickly and as smoothly and as eventful, non-eventful as possible. Um, I'm advised that uh, this is a non-smoking venue. So for those of you who enjoy a puff or two, please do it at your pleasure outside. The bathrooms are through to the, my left, but I think the most important thing is we request that uh, for all of us who have mobile telephony, um, if you may, please indulge us and just put it on silent. Um, if you don't know how to put it on silent, ask the person next to you. If they don't know, just switch it off. And, and again, as we had made a plea to all our friends in the media, we are happy that you are here today. Um, and we again request that uh, you ensure that as you do your job, we are as uh, non-obstructive as we possibly can. Again, we, we request the indulgent in, in that manner. Ladies and gentlemen, let's raise the Executive Mayor of the Nelson Mandela Bay Municipality, the Honorable Councillor, among Abele Bobani to welcome our guest here uh, this morning. Thank you very much. Uh, I'm going to request that the choir must sit here so, so that, uh, you know, as these things happen. Yakula Lendo Tessi Beganam Sanch. Yakula Noma Benga was a cool and Jebe is arm. Got another father of Obaletil Bazum Tulel. Uh, now I'm the Aguazo Kula program director. I, I can also sing, and I can sing more than him. Thank you very much, uh, program director, to the Watson family, senior politicians that are here, Mr. Watson's colleagues, friends, ladies and gentlemen, I greet you all this morning. Today, a uh, program director, a great sign of the Eastern Cape has come home. It is right and fitting that Gavin Watson should be laid to rest here in the Eastern Cape and in the Nelson Mandela Bay municipality, where he first made his indelible fruit footprints. This massive gathering here speaks volumes about the high regard in which he was held not in the land of his birth, that is Eastern Cape, but also in the rest of South Africa. On behalf of the Nelson Mandela Bay Municipality, the mayoral committee, council, municipal officials, and the residents of the city, 
May, may I extend my sincere condolences to the family of Gavin Watson on his busing. Today, pro program director, there are many questions and many uncertainties around his busing. But we also have many certainties about his life and legacy. We know that Gavin, his brothers, and the broader family played a remarkable role in the anti-apartheid struggle. They paid a heavy price for their belief that all people and all races are equal, as well as their association with anti-apartheid activists and the ANC. Soon, they began to dominate the headlines, ostracized by white society, vilified, persecuted, and prosecuted. What increased the outrage was that they were white, with farming background and highly talented rugby players to boot. The anti-apartheid police quickly learned that if you strike the Watson family, you strike a rock. The Watson family's heroic stance during the liberation struggle will go down in the history of annals. That is sanctity. Another sanctity is that Gavin loved the Lord and the Lord loved him. Blessing him with many talents. Blessing him with a quick mind. Blessing him with leadership skills. Blessing him a handsome appearance. And blessing him with sport talent. I therefore trust a uh, program director that in these sad days of mourning, Gavin family will take solace from all he represented and from his many achievements. We salute the remaining Watson brothers for their role in the struggle and for, and for remaining so close over the years. The bond between brothers is precious to his children and grandchildren. Parents live through you. You and your nephews and nieces come from a remarkable stock. The Watson blood flows through your veins. And it's up to you to keep the legacy alive and make South Africa a better place for all its children. Thank you very much, ladies and gentlemen. Ladies and gentlemen, Lindsay is Gavin's daughter. Lindsay has a, a letter that she will read for this congregation. This letter was written to Gavin by his mother in the year 2002. The grand passed away in 2010, and Gavin held this letter very close to his heart. Ladies and gentlemen, we honored guests, let's welcome Gavin's daughter, Lindsay.
Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. My dad cherished this letter and made sure he would be reminded of the love his mother had for him. So he framed it and hung it on the wall in the entrance to his house. I'd like to share it with you today. Dearest Gavin, I truly rejoice in being blessed with a son like you. You truly are a gift from God. I want to thank you very much for all the love and care you so freely lavish upon me and the family. I very much appreciate it all. I can never repay you, but what I do is pray fervently for you that God will let his blessings rain upon you. As from a small boy, God has kept his divine hand on you and you were anointed with the, the gifts of the Holy Spirit. And remember, the gifts are irrevocable. God says, a new spirit I will put within you and I will put my spirit within you. So having said all of this, I know God will guide you in your endeavors to restore family ties as you take over where daddy left off. My years are now numbered, but I have the assurance that God will be with you in your undertakings. Lovingly, Mom. In closing, I'd like to end off a quote by Dr. Miles Monroe. Death ne never threatens a human who discovered purpose. My dad discovered his purpose. Rest in peace. Thank you, Nancy. Thank you, Lindsay. After, after Lindsay, Gavin has a son. His name is Roth. As he ascends to the stage, Roth is paying tribute and homage to his old man. As, as he affectionately called Gavin. Um, he comes up the stairs, ladies and gentlemen. Let's welcome Roth to pay homage to his old man. Gavin Joseph Watson, husband to Leanne and father to Roth, Megan, and Lindsay, passed away tragically on the 26th of August, leaving behind his clan, as well as thousands of people he loved, served, and fought for for so many years. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. As Papa kindly introduced me, I'm Roth. I'm Gavin's first and only son. Dad was a remarkable man who was blessed with living an anointed and fruitful life. He would naturally, people would naturally gravitate towards his positive energy and his love was contagious. Dad had the natural ability to inspire and motivate people just by being present and waking up every day vibrating full of kindness. It was always a running joke between us that if I could bottle his positivity and zest for life, we could build the next Red Bull beverage company. That's maybe for another life. Dad was first and foremost a man of God. He loved the Lord deeply and with every ounce of his being. His faith. His faith was unshakable, unbreakable, and uncompromisable. Growing up with Dad, I would have the privilege of him quoting multiple scriptures. One of the earliest I can remember was of him trying to teach me faith as a young child. All I needed was to have the faith the size of a mustard seed and I'd be able to move mountains. As I got older, I soon learned that the book of Matthew frames faith so perfectly and truly understood why Dad loved verses 17 to 20. He would always preach, walk by faith, not by sight. Dad spent his life praying and seeking the Lord. He would leave his spiritual nuggets with whomever he could, even if it was just a simple phone call and always needed to end in prayer. Dad encouraged all board meetings to open and close in prayer, 
He also encouraged his leadership to get together every morning and start the day in prayer. He very pl proudly referred to his prayer meetings in the mornings as his miracle mornings. One of Dad's favorite events every year would be the 21-day Daniel Fast, which we would start at the beginning of every new year. He was truly inspired by his friends and colleagues with whom he prayed and fasted. Dad would always say, it takes 21 days to make it or break it. Let's put on the armor of God and make the year spirit-filled. Growing up as Gavin's firstborn has been a true privilege, not only for me, but for all the siblings and cousins in the family. My oldest cousin, Valens and Corsonati, had an incredible special bond with Dad. Dad and Corsi, and Corsi's godfather, was in Corsi's godfather, and my mother, Leanne, was in Corsi's godmother. In the years that followed, and as our Watson clan grew, we would soon he would soon become known as godfather to all the children. Not uncle, not worm, not Kokeli or Tata, but as godfather. My mother was in the same context known as godmother to all the kids. It was always a running joke that one day people may just think that he was like Don Corleone. Dad, not having a clue who Don Corleone was, would always respond, well, if he's a man of God, then that's good enough for me. Another fond memory I have with my dad was watching him buy shoes. As he and, <clears throat> as he and his brothers previously had a men's clothing stores, or a few men's clothing stores, he really fancied himself as an expert in menswear, specifically shoes. Dad would really love every little bit of detail in a perfectly made shoe. Watching him closely was like watching a child pick out a new toy from the toy store. He would gently press the leather between his fingers, count the number of eyelets, debate the length of the shank and the thickness of the sole. He would then turn the shoe upside down and inside out and press the toe to make sure that it had just the right resistance. He would then explain in great detail why this was the perfect shoe and that we both had to buy it. It's not often a son has the opportunity to reflect and pre prepare two eulogies for my father. As tough as it has been, it's also been incredibly uplifting. I've so many heartfelt stories of dad from people all over the world. A close family friend recalled dad inspiring him to win an athletics event when he was a young man by believing in himself and pushing himself to the breaking point. He said all he could remember was dad telling him that he needed to push through the pain barrier as this is where races are always won or lost by great athletes. Another friend of mine shared a very amusing story about meeting my father in the gym. Whenever you would see my father in the gym, and for people who are friends with him know that he was a very active man, this, call, this friend of mine would always run in the opposite direction because he knew that as soon as he would bump into Gavin, Gavin would grab him by the scruff of his neck and pull him into a training session or a 90 minute torture, se torture session, which he called it, in which my father would end up smiling and he would be barely standing. Dad got so much enjoyment in seeing people push themselves beyond their boundaries, develop their mental aptitude and serve others. He loved watching people grow and develop into their full potential. Dad took personal development so, seri so seriously that he started the Watson Corporate University on the Basasa campus in Johannesburg. Here, employees of the company could further their education by taking courses that were accredited by major universities. The employees would have access to professors on site that could assist in mentoring, mentoring them through their courses and all their coursework. The Corporate University was a huge success and received international awards from the Global Council of Corporate Universities. Dad's, most ha Dad's happiness. Dad was most happy when he was with his family, particularly the grandchildren. It was always so beautiful to see him lose himself when he was sitting on the couch playing silly games with any one of the grandchildren. It was almost as if time stood still for a moment. Dad really loved this verse in the book of Luke. I believe it was what he was thinking when he, lost, when he was lost in time with his grandchildren. 
People were also bringing babies to Jesus for, to, for him to place his hands on them. When the disciples saw this, they rebuked them. But Jesus called the children to him and said, Let the little children come to me and do not hinder them. For the kingdom of God belongs to them, such as these. Truly I tell you, anyone who will not receive the kingdom of God like a little child will never enter it. My mother. The strength of a man and his family rests in the tender hands of his wife. Today I'd also like to thank you, Mom, for allowing Dad to bless the lives of so many. Dad sacrificed 25 years of his life building an incredible organization and an incredible organization which provided employment to almost 5,000 people. Busasa pioneered every market sector that they worked in and touched the lives of everyone they worked with. Thank you, Mom, for supporting him and being his safe place. Spending time at our family home in PE always re-energized him and kept him focused on what is really important in his life his family. Lastly, to my father's Busasa family, thank you for loving him, honoring him, and bringing so much joy to his world. The firefighters, the prayer warriors, the A-team, dad wrote a beautiful story with all of you in it, and he loved you dearly for being a part of it. It has been 40 years since my father first died on the op first died. I'm not, not sure if everyone knows this, but 40 years ago there was a, an attempted assassination on his life. He was stabbed in the chest and he lost 16 pints of blood and almost bled out on the operating table. That was 1979. I believe he was given a second chance and he was reborn to fulfill God's plan for his life, which he did so gracefully. As the Israelites took 40 years to make it to the promised land, so it took Dad 40 years to make it back home to God, his Father. God works in seasons, and as, he, and as the season with Dad has now ended, and a new dawn rises for all of us, it would not be fitting if I did not close the season with a writing from Andrew Murray, which I believe depicts my father. Humility is perfect quietness of heart. It is to expect nothing to wonder at nothing that is done to me, to feel nothing that is done against me. It is to be at rest when nobody praises me or when I am blamed or despised. It is to have a blessed home in the Lord where I can go and shut the door and kneel to my Father in secret. And I am at peace in a deep sea of calmness when all around and above is in trouble. Rest in peace, Dad. By the way, he's wearing the same a pair of shoes that his father had. This man must be very lucky. <clears throat> Ladies and gentlemen, Mr. Joe Kumete, where is he? That's Joe. Right. Joe is the chairman of the what is now called African Global. Um, Joe is probably one of the first people that joined Gavin when he moved to start his operations in Gauteng. Um, he comes here representing the men and women, some of them in this congregation today. You see they're wearing the same blue that Gavin created. This is the same blue that Gavin wore, the same blue that you would find that the staff at the airport wore, the same blue that you would find staff at the correctional services wore, the same blue that you would find um, at some of our youth facilities. This was the CEO who could wear any suit he wanted, and yet he chose to wear the same blue that a security guard would wear. Joe Kumad. Thank you, MC. Morning, ladies and gentlemen. As, as the MC was introducing me, I'm Joe Kumede, part of the leadership at African Global, and I have been tasked just to say a few words on behalf of the African Global family. To the Watson family, 
uh, as you know, we, we are one family, whether it's African Global or the Watson down this side, we always referred ourselves as one family. And for us to come in here to really send Gavin to his last resting place, we just want to send our condolences to each and every one of you. And also, I think the most important thing is that, you know, the sacrifice of the family, as Roger said, for 25 years, their dad was up in Jobek. And during those times, you know, Gavin, the first time he was starting up, we didn't have time even to, you know, to come down every week. He was coming down every second month for the, for the simple reason that we were running around trying to build up an organization that uh, Rod referred to at one stage, employing over five, 6,000 staff members. And if you know that as a result of that, there's so many dependents that were really part of the whole family. I first got to know Kevin, early 1995. He came down with his team to the mine I was working at, in a vendor in Pumalanga. They had to come and do a presentation to, to management and the union, because at that time, the, then Diambo, they were busy in the mine hostels, uh, doing catering, and our mine was not outsourced, and it was one of the mines they were looking at to have it outsourced. So at that time, I was working as an IR officer, and by default, I was invited to a meeting to interpret for, for management, because management was also part of that presentation. So when this team came from Tiambo, Gavin was doing the presentation, and I expected him, you know, do it in English, and I interpret. And to my surprise, he hit the whole presentation in closer. And, and I think that's when I realized this is a different character. I mean, it was way back in 1995, and I mean, in the mines, those of us who have been exposed in that environment, is that, you know, the closest one can get to a black language is Fanagalo. And I mean, here was a guy who hit the whole presentation, and management were very annoyed, because they thought that he was just taking a dick at them. And, 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 and from there on, I remember the consequence. I'll just tell you a short story. Consequences of that, after the meeting, the union said, look, we want to, these guys to change the life of our people, cater for them. And management didn't want to budge. And as a result of that, a week after that, the staff, they had to sit down under the mine, I mean, underground. And uh, management tried, coerced the branch, Go speak to the people. The guy said, no, we are not coming out until you agree that this, they have a source to these guys. And management didn't understand. They said, but why these guys in particular? And they said, look, go and see their operation. Management and the union and some of the staff went up to where, I think it was Devin Rudabot Deep. We went to see where Diambo was operating. And this way, and I realized that, you know, what he was saying was not just a PR exercise. He was really changing the life of the people. Because his motto then was that the only decent thing a miner can get is a decent plate of food. Be it breakfast, be it lunch, be it supper. And that was Kevin. And after that, management still didn't want to. Then the employees had to sit down. They had to call him all the way from Jobek to go underground, persuade the people to come out. That was Kevin. And I think from there on, I realized it was 95, 96, he invited me to come and join the team, and the rest is history. We have been together since then. But I think for me, the most important thing, and all the staff at African Global and Busasa knows, that you know, Kevin was the type of a person that believed in teamwork. That's the first thing. He believed in training and development. For him, it wasn't just a story or a PR or one of those things where people get points just because they're doing training and development. He lived it. He believed in true empowerment because every time there was an opportunity, he will not just choose one or two people. He will choose a team to go out and go and uh, be developed. I think one of his passions was, is, was technology. He was always fascinated with technology. That's why I think most of the time when we started 
we focus on the mines after 10 years, we change our direction, look at new opportunities. Even there, we had to go out different places, different destinations in the world, look for technology, bring it into the country, we pioneer that and all of that. That's why most of the time our company was at the cutting edge. I think for me also, beside all of that, the most touching thing is that because in our early years, Kevin realized that we didn't have enough time uh, running around, even going to church, because those years we're doing presentation left, right, and center. And that's when he started with the prayer meeting to say, look, in all our quest to build the material side, we also need to make sure that our spiritual side is catered for. That's why he started that, and that was open to everybody not just us as leadership and all of that. Each and every one of our staff members were welcome from a cleaner and all of that. That was the man that did not allow the rules to confine him into, into one box, never. Kevin always, if you look at his unconventional way of doing things, when he first came to the organization, he didn't want titles. He said, you know what, titles confine people to certain things, he didn't want that. He didn't want offices said look I believe in open plan because people hide behind offices. That's why he never even had an office. He only had his cell phone and he moved around the block. That was him. And people were surprised. How come a CEO not to have the biggest office in, in the block and all of that? But he decided to look for me to know what is going on in the organization, I'll be able to sit wherever. And that was Kevin. And I think all of us really by his person, we are really saddened because end of the day, I think there's a lot of things that he taught us. I think for me and for the rest of the team, they know that one of those things that Kevin never allowed himself to, to be attached to the things of this world. That's why for him, material things didn't matter. Even the cars that he was driving, most of the time, all what he wanted was a key. Whether it's driving a, a Volkswagen or whatever, most of the time, I mean, I, I've got a passion for cars. So most of the time, we used to go order a vehicle for him. The only time you'll see it when uh, he's brought in. And he'll be annoyed because he said, but why all of this? I just need this, say, four wheels to move around. Just a safe car, that's it. So it's not like he was not attached to a brand. He was not attached to anything and so on. And I think uh, the other thing, uh, uh, Papa mentioned it was the issue of a uniform from day one. He said, guys, for us to be one team, you can't have Kaiser Chiefs out in the field wearing different, uh, you, I mean, set of, of, of a kit. Everybody needs to look at the same. Whether you're a senior guy, whether you're a junior guy. And that has stuck with us. As you can see, the team around here, everybody is looking the same. And I think that was the man who built an identity for each and every one of us. I think with this passing, uh, in closing, I will say that we, on our side, we have lost a leader, as we call him Kokeli by default, because he was always a leader. He used to tell us to say, look, I will not ask you to do what I can't do. That was his motto. So meaning that if he had to do a presentation, he will do it himself and then ask you to do that. If he has to drive around, check on units or wherever, he will do that himself. So he was the type of a person who was not lazy, hardworking. I mean, the sacrifice that he made for himself to be up there for 25 years without his family. I mean, I only got to know the family maybe 15 years after, after that. But that, that was Kevin. He did not allow his family just to be there because he said, I don't want to impose my family on the rest of, the, of you guys. I want us, you are my family. And he lived in that, in that motto and, that, and this was the man. I mean, I can talk here hours and hours. That was the man. He just made us to feel that, look, there were opportunities. I think the thing that we will miss with Kevin was the fact that, you know what, is he was always smiling. For him, I mean, I came from an environment, I think, way on the mines is there, you know, there was no smiles. People, you know, just do your job and that's it. But when I came into this environment, 
Gavin always had a smile on his face. Even when he was angry, the next day he's forgotten. I mean, some of you guys will know how many times will Gavin say, fire that guy. You fire the guy, the next day he's forgotten. The guy is back at work. He'll be one phoning you and say, hey, re-employ that guy. So, but Gavin, you said he must be fired. You can't do that because then we're breaking the rules. Say, I don't care. Bring the, pay, the, the guy back. That was Gavin. He always forgiving, always forgetting, you know, the past. He was always, I think that's why I think most of the people don't even know what Busasa stands for. It means the future. Because he was always looking at the future. He never looked at the past. And I think for me, that's the most important thing is that even with all these episodes and all of that, and I think in closing, I will just say, you know, what pains me personally is that even for his belief in God, people vilify him for that. They make a part of a joke. I mean, the fact that he led a lot of people into the Lord, people don't just take it as a joke. But he made it his passion. He used to invite people, and he didn't care whether how many people were there. He always said two or three agree, so shall it be. He didn't care. He never forced anybody to come in and do into those prayer meetings. Yet, if you look at it, people will vilify him for that, to make it as if, you know what, it's a cult for somebody to pray. We all know it's not. A lot of people pray every day, and he just wanted to ensure that all of us spiritually were okay. In closing, I just want to read a message to the family so that they know that during this difficult time, they, they are not they are not al alone. The message says, life is a kind of like a party. You invite a lot of people. Some leave early, some stay all night. Some laugh with you, some laugh at you. And, you, and you, some show up really late. But in the end, after the fun, there are a few who stay to help you clean up the mess. And most of the time, they aren't even the ones who made the mess. These people are your true friends. And in life, they are the only ones who matter. And to the family, that's the message I just want to leave to you. That those are the people that are in this hall who are the true friends of the Watson family. Thank you.
Thank you, ma'am. And so we continue. Now, this is the given what's in we know. This is the given what's in. Now, when people were saying, yeah, he calls prayer meetings, I don't know. These guys have been singing f for the past 13, 14 years. 16 boys from all parts of our business that started this choir. 16 years they've been singing. And this I'm saying, it is a given what's in that we know. And not the ones that other people know. But this is our given what's in. And this is how we celebrate him. Thank you very much. And we move on swiftly. The Watson family, as everyone would know, very close-knit for the many generations. I mean, if you see from where they are and the young people and the, uh, the little ones that have been there, have been very, very close-knit. One of the brothers, Valens, is coming to speak on behalf of the family. Ladies and gentlemen, let's welcome Valens Watson. Thank you all for gathering here today. It's a, it's a marvelous day in that governors come back to rest here. And I have to be short in my address here because I choose out the jong up and my valley month. Uza I marsh in Dongogo, Uza Nwagosa. Aguivang, I may a tetanjani. How are you going to improve or be anywhere near what Lindsay had to say or Roth had to say or Joe had to say? Because these from the mayor down have been eloquent and they've said what Gavin was. So Archie would say, why mess it all up? And then again, my, my address here today has gone out the window when I heard there was a big man coming. 
a man with a big heart and he's a big leader and we've worked in his structures for many years if I go on too long he'll pull me aside afterwards and say <laughs> don't you know I've been your leader for many years not just today or yesterday give me more time to speak and to tell people of what this country is about so I'll be as brief as I possibly can we all know who Gavin was. We've had so many calls from people across the country. They would have liked to speak. And unfortunately, people that know the Watsons will see even the way the program works. Joe Gumadi is ahead of me. But I'm Gavin's younger brother. Shouldn't I be the head of Joe? But you see, the Busasa family was very close to Gavin's heart. So you fitted in where he would have wanted you to fit in. The Busasa board and the Busasa people were close to Gavin's heart. And when Tandi, all four foot eight of Tandi, weighing 40k, said to me in Johannesburg, she said, uh, Valence, uh, but understand, we knew Nko Kelly better than you did. Because he spent a lot more time with us over the last 20 years. So in many ways, the programs were dictated to by people that know him better than I have over the last 20 years. So when I had a call from Mu Cecenia and they wanted to have the program go a certain way, I said, well, this is a uli and nothing and doing a lento. What I join up a valley man, I see trailing don't go, you see. See how clearly I get in is our old song. Who who I get all the luli and city negatina window them close. Susta and uli and go. Uh, we, fortunately, Cecilia was uh, out of town when we got up there and were discussing what would happen and where Gavin would be buried and where the memorial service would be. But there was a strong push because most of his family, as in the Basasa family, and they outweigh us by 4,500 to maybe 20, wanted it in Johannesburg. Was that they believed was their home? And Forty Cecenia was out of town because three, four weeks ago, Cecenia buried his, his brother. And the Siopela family decided that Gavin was now a peddy and he's going to be buried in, Lump in, in Limpopa. <laughs> but Leanne said Port Elizabeth. And we're a family that respect everybody. Our women, our leaders, the church, and if Leanne says she wants Gavin here, so would be. So we've come this today to bury Gavin and to say goodbye to him and to say Hamba Gatle, Kulua. That's what we're here for today. But I don't want to take your time because I can say so many things about Gavin. But I'll be wasting time that is more important for other people to speak and to tell you about Gavin other than what his family says about him. But what I would like to say is that when you read the scripture and say God's thoughts aren't our thoughts and God's ways aren't our ways. God's timing for Gavin was when it was. It wasn't when we would hope it to be or when we think it should be or when he thought we think he should have lived to 92 or more like my mother did or at 81 when my father did. God took Gavin at the time that God appointed. God's timing is perfect. And I wanted to say more, but Roth tends to take things that I wanted to say. And that shows the thought pattern in the Watson family. We don't have to communicate things, we just know it. And I wanted to quote something in Johannesburg, which Roth took and quoted before I could. And today I wanted to quote from the Reverend Andrew Murray, who was a Scottish theologian that had huge influence on the Engier Kerk in this country but Roth beat me to it. Because we are men of faith, women of faith, a, a, a family of faith. And I want to say what Gavin would want me to say because I've seen the media of late since the memorial in Johannesburg. I want to say we believe the Lord God is above all and we are supposed to love him above all. 
and that we're supposed to love our neighbor as ourself. And that's what Gavin wanted. And that's what he imprinted upon us, that my father imprinted upon us, and my mother did, so that's the way it is. But also to be understood correctly, the Watsons believe in freedom of worship. Whatever your religion is, we, we as the Watson family believe you have a right and the space and to be respected for what your religion is. And we love it if you respect our religion. Because our Christianity is not just a religion, it's a way of life. We believe in living it. There's a, a, my father would always say to us, be careful chaps, because there are many Christians, but people don't see many followers of Christ. We attempt to follow Christ. But that's not to say that we believe that we are holier than thou. Because we can say as the Apostle Paul, we are sinners saved by grace. We can say as the Apostle Paul, we are the chief of all sinners. But I want to conclude my remarks by, by saying that at this juncture, was like, there's so many people here that want to talk about Gavin and can speak about him better and more eloquently. But I want to say this, and this is, I want to do a bit of housekeeping. Sindlon in Congo Linga party up. Jan. There was an, a saying once many years ago, and they said, if Port Elizabeth sneezes, the country catches a cold. I I go to Alongok. Is no busy call up. Only like call up. Um, sans of wonke, a mamele good, good twenty up. It was so interesting when Nomvula Mongona Yana said she learnt civic issues from Toza Mila Bota from what he did in Port Elizabeth in the 70s. The Akela Makaban in Congo, my boy, Le Gulandao. That is what Gavin would have wanted. The unity of purpose in this, in this region. We cannot be divided. What Gavin would have wanted is that Port Elizabeth, the Eastern Cape, and of course the whole country, gets to economic growth and that all people have a job. There's nothing that Gavin liked more than to see people at work. There was a saying sung in, in the 70s. It wasn't a, a movement song, but they used to say, I'll add, Nabafaz. Nabafaz. But it needs us as leaders. Yeah, we we're all leaders here. We're a non racial organization, we're a non racial family as the Watsons. We believe in the quality of people. And we do believe, because the ANC also says it's a non and it is a non-rational organization. That's why we're comfortable there. We're comfortable in the Christian family because that is what we believe. We're comfortable in the ANC family because that is what we believe. We're comfortable in Port Elizabeth because we love this place and we love the people of this place. But I want to say, my mother, of course, wrote to Gavin and said, her time is up. It wasn't up because she lived another eight or so years after that. But many of us, I'm 67, Gavin's gone at 71, our great leader sitting here, he's 10 years older than me. He doesn't look like he's 10 years older, but he is, believe me. But there's the young crowd coming up, the young lions. I want this city this region, this province, 
And I'm saying that's what government want, to show the lead and let the organization that we work for and the Christian community that I work with to say, let us build a better South Africa. And we have leaders that can do that. And the young leaders are here. I've met them. I've been very impressed with them. So I'm saying to you, in Congo, my will of Glanda, I'll be go you. But I want to say, and it can be said in no better way, Thank you very much, Falan, spoken like a true brother, but at the same time, challenge all of us to make sure that we are able to move forward properly. Um, in every family, interestingly, in every family, you'll always find that there is that one that end up uh, becoming a brother that becomes the sixth and the seventh and the eighth. And I've soon found out in my time, having known the family, that there's brother number six, sister number nine, and they all had to convene and then agree for the purpose of today and moving forward, who is brother number five. And, and, and I think the decision was unanimous. I know some of them don't like it, but in a democratic place that where they agreed that to put Archie is number five, officially. Number five, but Archie, uh, over to you. Officially number five, brother of the Watsons. Some busy actors said to who put Mfundis Archie. Today is not about wallabies. <laughs> I need to revive my spirit and to strengthen myself. I want to lead you in this song. Please, everybody, must sing. Yema, Yema, Yema. Vuma 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 Lenoba is sick, a sister as a jail. Ya in Gongo, your sugar going ye, or book out Galibai. I'm here to speak on behalf of the Watson family, but first of all, let me greet uh, 
our president, comrade, JZ. The Premier of the Eastern Cape, Comrade Mabuyani. Ubra Charles, and all the other dignitaries that are here today, I greet you all, and the house at large, of course, in the name of our Jesus Christ, the Almighty God. Amen. Amen. This is my family. Gavin is our big brother. I met this family when I was in my early 20s, but now I'm in my, in my late 60s. We've been together more than 40 years. These are the sons of the old man called Ntoko. Ntoko Tole, because their father had a big head and big ears. A Christian. Gavin is the one who introduced me to, to the family. I would like to say this. For me to be part of this family was a blessing in disguise. I'm what I am today because of this family. If you touch them, you touch me. Because these are my brothers. It's Gavin Joseph Watson, Ronald James Watson, Valence Michael, Tamsan Watson, and Daniel John Watson. He's the youngest of the brothers. And they have a sister, Sharon was married to Mr. Tafko. When I met them, these kids, they were not there. These guys were bachelors then. They never had wives. I had to be no zago zago for them, looking for wives for them. <laughs> they were staying at 34 Park Drive. Gavin is our big brother. He slept in an outside room. Chicky, the room on top, and Kevin, I mean, Valence and uh, Ronnie, other rooms inside the house. I never saw their girlfriends. Because they were very secretive. But at that stage, at that time, I had many, many girlfriends. <laughs> you know, they used to call me in order, because this is a Christian family, really. If you, if you know Untroko, their father, and their mother was called Ubobi, People from earliest days they used to call it Unondwango. Those were my parents. Valens, one day, he says to me, I must accompany him, he's going to a certain house here at uh, Cape Road. I said, What are you going to do there, Valens? He said, no, man. There's a lady there I want to speak to. We went together, I'm a company, we went together to this house. Yeah, but I saw this lady, man, she's very young. And then she spoke to him and then we went outside. When she left, I said, my valley, no, man. This woman, is too, she's too young, man. You're a chicken murder. 
He said, no, man. She's old enough, you know, to be my, girl my girlfriend. That was Eileen. And at the end, he got married to Eileen. And, and Gavin, you know, organized one of the biggest weddings in this town at 34 Park Drive. The whole township was there to celebrate with us. These are the men that recruited me into joining the African National Congress. I was Umnyamana, and they changed me to be a non racialist. We were members of Fimbogoto. They recruited me to join the ANC. I was recruited by the Watsons to join the African National Congress. And we were members of Fimbogoto, underground structures of the movement. We never operated on the above structures of the movement. The contribution Gavin has made has made a lot of contribution in our struggle. He helped the guys externally, sending them clothes. Amabu trained the township. He gave them food and clothes. I still remember some of Amabu in Soweto on sea, not Soweto in Joburg, Soweto on sea. He gave them a soccer kit and went together to deliver that kid. Mono Badela, I, I, I first met Gavin before I met the other brothers. It was in 1975 when we were preparing for our final against Tiger Beck. Mobs Bongwana was a coach, and he wasn't a good coach, you all know that. <laughs> and Mono Badela was a journalist and the president of Waza Kelly Rugby Union who was a member of the ANC. He asked Gavin to come and assist us. We were training one of the schools in the township. I saw this gentleman fit, wearing a tweed jacket. He took his jacket off, he started helping us. And in that year, we won the SA Cup. We were sorrow champions because of his assistance. Mona Badella went back to him again to ask them and his brothers now in 1976 final at Adcock Stadium against Tiger Beck. We won that final again. But Mona went back to the shop again to speak to these guys. Dennis Williams came first. He was also one of the officials of Wazakela Rugby Union to recruit them into joining PAC and they declined. Mono Badela came, they agreed. They will join the National Congress. The ANC, which is our home. We are tried and tested members of the African National Congress. We love ANC, Valence is right. That is our home, that is our movement. You know, I find it so strange when this uh, Busasa, Busasa saga came on. They were portraying our brother as a, as a criminal and as a thief. Gavin has got a good heart. He's been helping our organization for the donkey years. There was nothing wrong for him to assist or to help the African National Congress because it's our organization, it's our party. <laughs> He's been doing that for years. Because even the other political parties, they've got their funders who are supporting them financially. <laughs> so what is wrong for government to support? the African National Congress, that is political party, and that's his home, and it's our home. 
19th of October, the people know the story. I'm not going to go deep into that. When their house was bombed, they were out of town. And they asked me and Jeff, uh, Jeff to just go around the house and check if everything is in order. And that evening I was from the church wearing my suit. And while we were sitting outside the car, we were attacked and thrown into the house. And the security forces started burning the house while we were inside. But by the grace of God, we managed to go out of that building. I had 45% third degree bends. Some people called me by names. They said I'm a Kentucky. Some said I'm Mr. Rooster. Some said my ears are like Bug Rogers. Because they were after the Watsons. I was in hospital for, I would say, six weeks. Ronnie, the soldier, Gavin has got a soft heart and Valence and Chicky. They were scared because I was in a terrible state. But Ronnie was there almost every day looking after me. You know. After I've been discharged from hospital, they took me straight to prison. I didn't heal properly. And I was tortured. You know that day when the, when the house was burned? They took us to the provincial hospital, myself and Jeff. We were interrogated, and it was very cold that evening. Imagine people with third degree burns, 45%, getting interrogated by the security forces. They claimed that we burned the house because the Watsons wanted to claim the insurance. All that junk. That was a false story. Then I was sent to prison. They were also. I was sent to Sarkos Police Station. I stayed there for some months. Then I was referred to Port Alfred, next to Port Alfred Police Station there. And they were at Royal. The only man who was outside was Gavin, looking after the family, trying to assist the family, and us while we were still in the jail. You know when you vote? The late new vote, and Rulose, very notorious security police of this area. He came to me several times trying to beg me to be an informer, offering me money to sell my brothers. I never sold them. Like many of you may be sitting here, the appeal that you have sold in the struggle. <laughs> they are my brothers. There's a lot I can say about this family. I'm a fifth brother. Achim Kale is a fifth brother. Ngamandambola. I belong to Amandambo clan. <laughs> Lastly, let me say this, Gavin. The Bible says in Kosa. Umzama umche uzami. Ugaza ulufezi. Ukolo ulugeni. Ebu kibele ulindwasi saba sabo. Eslin wenga wabonga manda ba kolo. Sasa ushanga na gwelo kai. Jenga manda ba kolo. Abaneli zulikati. Se believe good. I'm very good on God's own fa. I'm very good on full of my mind. Likoni tem. Rest in peace, my brother. Until we meet again. Well, brother number five has spoken. Ladies and gentlemen, the family continues to receive prayers and messages of support from all of you. 
and they are humbled by our support and appreciate every phone call, SMS. I mean, I uh, see people are buying airtime these days. And, and they really acknowledge all your SMSs and your phone calls and your support, but importantly also your prayers as you continue to think about them at this time. As we, as we prepare for the, the scriptures, we have received a lot of support and we also understand that the, given an opportunity, a lot of us would want to come up to the podium and share our relationship and how we were touched by Gavin and the, the family. But also importantly, we also appreciate that in our midst, we have those that would fully and I would imagine adequately represent all of us who would not be able to um, rise to the podium today. The Watson brothers were involved in sports, some of them very bad, some of them tried, some of them very good, some of their, uh, their kids better than their dads. Um, and coming from that um, a sports fraternity, to say a word or two on behalf of the sporting community, ladies and gentlemen, let's welcome Udal Temba Lutwa. Uh, <coughs> thank you, Program Director. Let me greet uh, the Watson brothers, uh, Watson family, and everybody inside with uh, Jesus' name. Amen. <clears throat> Let, uh... Okay. <clears throat> Utibana Utibana Guetu Ne family Yaga Watson Nga Kasha Ikwaru Yaisazama Utibanisa Abandu Malape Epa It wasn't brothers the figure wasn't brothers came to join Kwaru a team that was non racial and then uh, the four brothers wanted to come to Kwaru, but the official says, no, man, guys, you can't join Kwaru. Kwaru is a union. Then you must split. 
Ronnie, go to Park Rovers. You, Chigi, go to Spring Rose. Valance, go to, <coughs> to Wallabies. So that, that, that's how we met these guys. And <coughs> the role of Gavin and his father, Dan, was to support especially the younger guys. I see the, the fifth brother of Watson was still schooling then, Archie and Zola, and they would recruit them from school to come and join, to come and play for Guaro. The role that uh, Gavin played in Guaro made us to be recognized even abroad. Because abroad, <coughs> they didn't know that blacks are playing rugby in South Africa. But Watson Brothers made a plan that some of our matches must be seen abroad. That's how we were recognized. And that made us a threat to the system of South Africa, the special branch. So they were pushing us. Now, <clears throat> the Watson Brothers, especially Cheeky, Valance, and their father, they played a big role of in, in Kwaru and even those guys that were playing for Kwaru, some of them they didn't work, but they had jobs. They were, we had tailors in the township that were recruited by Kevin to come and work in their shops. So with those few words, the Watson brothers have played a big role in our struggle and also to improve our situation as blacks. Thank you. Apathetic divides, freedom, freedom. In our lifetime, in our lifetime, Sila Panje, Sila Panje, Sise Mashati, Sila Panje, Che, Sise Mashati, Amba Bota. Elilis we no koko bet. Elilis we labantu abamnyam. Elilis we no koko bet. Elilis we labantu abamnyam. Elilis we pumatunde. Elilis we labantu abamnyam. Elilis we no koko bet. Oliver, Oliver, Molo, Sota. 
Oliver, Oliver Molo Sot. Oliver, Oliver Molo Sot. Oliver, Oliver Molo Sot. Oliver, Oliver for a temple. Who you yet in us in what you make? Oliver, Oliver for a temple. A temple in us in what you make. Difficult time in 1985 where every leader in PE was detained. The only people that were remaining behind was a team called the Amber Boat, the army of the ANC in the locations. Lovely, which will Asila le makaya, sasila le shak, asila le mak, asila le shak, otu, tula, otu bolan sike, otu bolan make, otu bolan.
Muhammad. Rakusta. Thank you, Matavan. Can we, we we continue? Right. The next message of support. Next message of support. I'm told um, that uh, there are generations and generations of Amakaban, and they again went and they have a unanimous decision to be represented by Okusta. Uh, as we, as we. Bambingo, my Bambingo. Moleni. Tall, 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 Mongameli Uzuma Owasua better and welcome Sholos Premier Yapod Mayor All the senior leaders of the ANC that are here, citizens of the Nelson Mandela Bay, and all the people who are coming from all corners of the land. I want to start by saying this, guess toss. Who are Chim Kele? Low bang, how bang, when you're now a scan, well, Kai. Achim Kele, who claims that is a fifth son. On the day of the funeral of the mother of this family, 2011, Havelock Church, Methodist Church, while Taiwan Umfundi see Brian Bird, Ogogba, Enze Umtandas O Kribe, Pam Gogba, Loma Mayok Bewa Window, Ayola Lagui. Wa Fagalisa Amas Yom Bulel Gobomi Imi Sebenzi Nezenzo Zekaya Lagawatsin Wa Tikaya Teta Wati Tiko Uzube no Sapo Lagawatsin God must keep and look after the Watson family. Udinga de corner goes and if apple lufa corner, help me to never leave them by the way, to be always on their side. Gegna yabi sebenzi yabo yabulungisa because of their righteous deeds. Nengneba engenambali so kubandaba needs. Wasn't gone by isifuba wati. Din Jenje, Lusa Polagawasi. An Nagama to Dayelap, Ekugam Nalo, Ugiakum Kaula, 
umdambo kuba yesithi uwathethele eyona nje ebalekile kwintetho kamna kamdambo indoba is this thing called ukuba nombulelo And for those who were not there, it's just that when the parallel part, the common zone I found in Oscar Teta, in Bone and Gokwe, that is what a human being should do. What when Zelwa is in doing something about it, and that is the very reason that I think all those who were in the struggle with me, or I was in the struggle with them, said I must come here and express to the world our gratitude to the Watson family for what they have done, in some cases not for any one of us, but for many that we know. They were constructing a society that was broken, or that was being broken. When he spoke, I came to the conclusion that says, in this course again, Nasisi piwo somtu onombulel. Sizwendini sagowetu. I am asked to speak on behalf of all the activists to reflect on the life of Gavin during the violent turmoil of the 1970s and 1990s. I am fortunate that I have known this family for more than a quarter of a century. It sounds big, but it's 25 years, eh? <laughs> I knew him at the same time as everyone else here. And in Zange Ndibaze, Kale, Nijego, Butfeya, I think, Nabanye, who knew them, Butfeya, who must be the last one to go to Ndibaze, actually, with everybody in Port Elizabeth, that was at the time when they took that decision to cross the line. When they crossed the line, no African person didn't pay, didn't pay attention to the Watson family. That is the truth, and that is the reality. <laughs> Today, we see the Gavin we admired up. He loved this country and its people. The Gavin, who had many, many battles with us as individuals and as a collective and as a group, because Gavin, when he came into the struggle, he didn't come through a favor. He came as an individual that got his own ideas. There was no question that we were going to. There was no question that we were going to bully him because we are white. You can't say this. Gavin stood up challenge us to the limit. And of course, no Roni, amane ifaga bunyo agibe to here and there. That's what happened. That's a reality. <laughs> With my own eyes, I saw a, gener a generous and hard-working person and a fitness fanatic in the man, Elilbio. Together with his brothers, they abandoned the privileges associated with the pigmentation of their skin to join those who were racially discriminated. For my generation, his action inspired us. Yes, today, everybody is going to say, no, by the way, President, these people today, you see this all in Toilet also, when these guys crossed to join us, there were no such thing. The people who will be there, we are Baba Alabanga Pina. That is the truth. Today, everybody, Ugwindoba, no, Sasibale Gapa, Yabantu came later on. Bullets were fired for Nabanina, who was challenging them. I saw them as rugby players that openly defy the country's racial laws. For those who do, who do not know, when the Watson brothers went to play in the townships, 
B.J. Foster was the Prime Minister of South Africa. He was in charge of the country. The country was solid. You couldn't walk at any place up where you are not supposed to be and not be picked up within 10 minutes. Their brave stand fascinated both enemies and friends. Gavin Watson's role in the struggle for social justice, economic equality, and freedom for all is there for everyone to see. Gavin, together with his brothers, deserted the racially constructed apartheid rugby and joined the anti-apartheid and non-racial rugby under the Kwasakele Rugby Union. I'm so happy Yes, there was no way she couldn't come. Patela's wife, because Patela Gasek, the person that we were told went to recruit the Watsons to join the team. These people, they never saw color. They were brought up to reject racism in all its various manifestations. Nobody, whatever color. The Watson will see through it is racism and they will reject it. And the good news is this. They have passed that to their children. I know it. And in 13, I talk about something I know. They attended my wedding. They respect the cultural diversity of this country. They understood in the citizens I German born up. Don't worry, the Watson are happy with what is happening. Ukai goes out to Umkusa Jack, we are a funa bangant, because we got Umokus out of small back. No, no. Oh, Kevin was the brains behind the first shopping complex in Port Elizabeth in the township, which I mother were shopping center. He was the one who turned this thing, Lena, Lena, Bolileo, Yalapa, MacArthur Bath, and made it what it is today. Many people are employed there. Similarly, at the mother were Nansika shopping center. The boardwalk casino, it was his brains, and The Kuka development, it was his brain. I don't know by that, because this was a secret nationalist party that they had for many years. I don't know where he got it. And by Tata, by Vutulula, and they put on the table the Kuka. I D Z. Kevin Wakeford, Wakeford, Ukonap was the first one to run that. There are opportunists who were given a lot of opportunities and time to do things, but they failed. But Gavin has things to show. Tangible, not theories. Jobs were created. My friends who are based in Gauteng tells me that Gavin orchestrated the establishment and the funding of 33 creatures in the poverty ravaged Orange Farm area. Children homes and facilities, care facilities across the province, everywhere. Those are labor intensive things. This in Shaband is not talking and fourth industrial revolution. That is true jobs for people. They say this project touched more than 1,000 young people through running youth centers, giving them material, spiritual, and physical support, physical fitness, because if the children are not playing sport. That is why, if you notice, I said that when these guys revive the game, 
You see, in England, every time there's a good boxer, every time who was this uh, cricketer the other day, the English commentators, the first thing are going to say, are going to say, ha, you're going to see more kids playing in the streets. You're going to see more boys running in the rugby. As a result of that, because the people back here, like rugby, Baba Baniz, I was demoted. Dalia Uchobu, fourth team, wish it was even difficult to make the reserve of the fourth team because of the number of the people who were playing. Eloiso High School. <laughs> I applaud Gavin for spreading the family values which their parents inculcated in them. They rub off on everyone who was close to them. That is the influence of individuals. Because the impact of individuals in the society is in It's just something big. I see that goes down to the younger generation of the younger Watsons. You cannot fault them. On the day the Watsons were sentenced in a court somewhere. I'm a police. I'm very open to forget Putin pressure leader and the Cooper Pire because they wanted to wrap it into my ears so that I hear properly that if you mess up with God's will, God's will means that black and white must not associate. You're going to end up like the Watson. They're going to rot in jail. From Abba, we all try Fort Brown. That's what they told me. They were so happy. During the consumer boycott, they, what happened? The Watsons came out in the debate when a decision was taken. What do we do about it? There was no dispute about who are they, what, what. But the question was the practicality of it. Comrades like about Africa, Makolo, Mtwabondube fought strongly. Uguti, guys. The enemies will be so pleased to see the Watsons being hurt by the people they believe, they love them. Actually, they are going to know, Uguti, you don't love them. All right? That is the reality. But what was that issue? At issue, it was a political decision and a strategy. And the strategy that was taken was that, because some other people will do that, and that view was carried through. Despite that, the Watsons never turned their backs on the struggle and their mission. They continued to support. As a result, many of the comrades who were left outside jail were still being taken all over the country and hidden by the very Watsons when their business was being boycotted. And if I were to talk of an intelligence in our days, I would have said, hey, Africa, irresponsible. I heard him now in the TV saying that he stayed at the Watson's house with when he was hiding from the police. Do you the comrade irresponsible? Eh? Because he could have brought the whole enemy and army there. But anyway, that's how they did it, through sheer bravery. Because nobody would have done that busy with them. Tozamile Bota, when he went to Lesotho for the first time, after the formation of the Port Elizabeth Black Civic Organization in Pepco, to meet with the African National Congress there, what happened? That is what they gave to him. You know that? Who could have done that? Who began suit at that time? Ladies and gentlemen, I think you don't understand me. You think that I'm talking in 1994 to 1998. You think that I'm talking 2005 to 2018. No! I am talking on and around 1984 to 89. At the time, the Watson joined the struggle Already the security police have killed people. 
who were thinking that they are clever. When they joined the struggle, the police still killed people. How about Steve Biko, Neil Ackett, the Mkangas, everybody. So I want you to be clear. Don't say, oh, I suga. So it was nice. It wasn't bad. No, that's not the story. The story is a story at the height of apartheid. They were helping children fly, fleeing the country. They were buying school uniforms, giving people bursaries, give people bail money, and I was telling the younger Unatsiku Roth that I have a picture of who Gavin when we used to go and sit there, whatever I'm asked to go and request to, like, uh, can to get a bus to go to a conference. He will always, my picture of him, he was always coming out of the room with a, with a box of the shoes. Always I saw him. You know, because he was a guy that never had time to sit down and have long chat. No, he was always and then a decision is taken. Move, go, it's done. So, okay. Kwakai Shokokomda, the village greeting. Kokomda came from Robin Island, got a job. Alex Hala, very brilliant comrade. One of the best of the, of the 40 people that I, I work with who came from Robben Island in my organization, Alex was one of them. But Alex was working, I don't know, in a garden somewhere. Pathetic. And Michael Craig at the time, Ukweli Lord, Yagamari, and Roberts. I mean, it was so bad. Okay, I had a better job because that Kweli pass became seven seed. Through no Gwenda, no Bimba, Gavin got that comrade a job. And also, Kandisa Kubezela, he also did in Anseika, the concerned citizens. Before 1985, there was no such thing as an, a black leader, African leader. So I said, Nigui description is like the leader of the violent, or the don't do the violent, don't do, don't do, don't do. For the first time, people were called leaders. Gavin brought them to say, Baba Zisa. All the big businessmen, Safi Gapa. And we had meetings with them. From that time onwards, that thing, Yakubega Guyo Yongi South Africa, Kuzo Kuzo Velo CBM, Kuvele Obani. All those things which led to Landyoba, they went to Dakar and all of that and all that. It came from where? From the little things that happened here. Because the reason for the boycott was to make sure that the, the white people in town understand what was going on in the township. But I have to say this as I'm going to sit down. Well, you got the people here. And when you have people around you, the most important thing, you check, Uguti, who are these people? It is nice to have a lot of people, but at the end of the day, for you, is to understand but who are these people? And these people are people whose lives have been touched by Gavin, by Gavin's work, by his influences, by his behavior, and I am saying to the family that keep going. Don't stop doing good. I know there are times in life when you say, for what all of this? No. No. Who knows? If I was never put into your home and be given a knife and fork as a joke as it was at the time when I couldn't handle these things. But today, here am I where I am, respecting human beings, understanding that there are good and bad people in the world. And I'm saying to the family, keep it up. Don't give up. You've got the masses behind you. Thank you.
بام مجاز امین انٹرسٹنگ ہاؤ فرینڈ اسپیک ٹو ایچ ادر واز ٹاکنگ اینڈ واز سینگ اسپیک اف دیز ار فرینڈز ہو اسپیکس ویری فرونڈلی اباؤٹ ایچ ادر دیز ار فرینڈز ہو نیور شائی اوے فرام ایچ ادر دیز ار فرینڈز ہو سپورٹ ایچ ادر ایون وین دا نیگیٹو ڈزنٹ سی سو اینڈ ٹوڈے اٹ از پلیزنگ ٹو ہیئر فرام فرینڈز ہو آر ہیئر ٹو ٹیسٹیفائی پے ہوم ایج اینڈ ٹریپ ٹو ون آف دیئر اون ہو دے نو بیٹر ون دین وٹ پیپل ٹاک اباؤٹ Next to speak, ladies and gentlemen, comrades, please help Ms. Pagamise, the first citizen of the province, the Honorable Priya Comrade Oscar Mabuya. موسیقی The police, uh, uh, former president, the uh, African National Congress, no uh, former president, we live with Africa, who Africa, uh, president, who uh, Jay Z Zuma. The <laughs> leadership, the uh, Lapa, Yonke, the uh, Alliance, the uh, Abba Patiswa, the uh, Abba Patiswa Malunga Parliament. And the police say El Kaya and Gokete Gleo, like our words in the village and Gamandande, Moluen Mandande, or Gamandambo, Moluen Mandambo is a club on his alarman. In Gokel is a business as Lapa and Amtlange, fellow mourners, good day to you all. The Lapa and Amtlange and Gokunyazi Swa, the provincial executive committee ANC. Kwano Hulumendo, Lalapa, Epondwe, Nogokbasis, or Lulisa, Amazu of Veluano, Well Kaya, Silapa Ge, Sizongrina, Esugbonileo, Sitete, Esquazio, Gobasisazo, Gogba Aba, Balala Uktula, Bavala Sita Metro, Bona, Bavuletina Mel, Tandile, and Bona as veterans, Zagoti Apa, Digo Capele. Now, Baunzo Otto, the advisor to the president, Ubao Uchals Ngakula Opagati Gwetu Namtlanjin. Firstly, let me once again pass our deepest heartfelt condolences to the Watson family on the tragic loss of Comrade Gavin Watson. Comrade Gavin was a husband was a son, was a brother, was a father, and indeed he was a comrade. Si Kunzula Kulontungu Nikuyo Kaya Lagawatsin. 
Kavin was a nation builder, as many comrades have shared here, and a humanitarian par excellence. It is said that in a week we lay him to rest. Our nation is reeling from the shocking murders of a number of young women, amongst them Ubebe Lee, our champion, Apa Epondweni, Kwagunye, no Oine Nem Khwekyana, who have become the latest victims of femicide in our country. Knowing Comrade Gavin, he would have been condemning these acts with contempt they deserve. And we want to pass our condolences to the families of these girls, but more than that, Comrade Gavin would like us men to stand up against the few men who perpetuate violence against women in our society. This is a task we must pursue in his name. When the news of Comrade Gavin's passing broke out, it shocked many South Africans. Personally, I was hurt more by the behavior of some, of some of the South Africans, particularly the media houses, when they really completely changed the narrative about the character of government and the work that government has done over uh, decades. I want to remind them that the rights that they enjoyed, that they enjoy, which at times they used to trample on others' rights, were fought for and won through the selfless contribution of the likes of Comrade Gavin Watson and his family. Comrades and friends, I think it is proper that I let everyone who is in attendance here today know that we are here today unashamedly as the African National Congress leadership and the ANC members to bid farewell to our fellow comrade whose blood was black, green, and gold, and when it was not fashionable to do so. The Watson family blessed us with a generation of comrades who understood clearly, as explained by Chief Albert Lutuli, that, and I quote, it is inevitable that in working for freedom, some individuals and some families must take the lead and suffer that the road to freedom is via the cross, close quote. The Watson family suffered a lot under the apartheid and were constantly harassed by the regime for their belief that South Africa belongs to all who live in it, black and white, and that no race should be dominant over the other. When we count families that were at the forefront of our struggle and who suffered immensely, we must not omit the Watson family. It would be disingenuous to do so. In the ANC, we are taught never to forsake each other as comrades, particularly when one of us is facing difficult challenges. Seemingly, the post-apartheid era has consumed us so much that we forget this important principle that should bind us. We tend to dance and rejoice at the troubles of other comrades. In doing that, we play directly at the hands of our political opponents. I can't find any reason other than the fact that Gavin and his family have remained true and loyal servants of the African National Congress. So, so Dolobuge, we are born again uh, because this family Akawatsin understood very well the fundamental goals of our national democratic revolution. They committed themselves not only in the ANC. They've done everything uh, to ensure that we pursue those fundamental goals. The goals of a united uh, country, goals of a non-racial, non-sexist, democratic, and prosperous nation. Without all these, this country will never be prosperous. We need a social uh, cohesion. We need a nation, -wood. we need a nation building. All of us uh, paying uh, that contribution as Watson family did. They forgot that uh, Gavin, like a, any other ANC members, took an oath of membership and, and declared, and I quote, I will place my energies and skills at the disposal of the organization and carry out tasks given to me that I will work towards making the African National Congress 
and even more effective instrument of liberation in the hands of the people, and that I will defend the unit and integrity of the organization and its principles and combat any tendency towards disruption and factionalism. This is what uh, a comrade uh, Gavin did. Uniambona must now factions the ANC. We support Vela Magdal, Uniga Wongum to Onen Jongo Zotata, Elilizwe, Lipege Pambi. And this is only the African National Congress that can really do that. All other people are saying so. I must also acknowledge the leader of uh, DA in the province, Comrade Ungaba Pang and Mbonile Apa, and I and the account. We are Habula, Namsanje, Kungasa Esambulugir. The good work of nation building that was that the Watson family has done and is doing is well documented, particularly here in our province. As their youth centers gave second chance to many young people who were in conflict with the law. When the society had washed its hands on our troubled young people, it was Comrade Gavin and who stepped in to offer young people reasons to leave. Who will do that work and now and so the question lingers as every effort is being made to delegitimize the work he has done. Who will continue to bring his motto of life, which says, and I quote, a life transformed for the better is a life enriched for the future, close quote. My tribute to Comrade Gavin would not be complete without mentioning his role in fighting for transformation in sport. We have seen these veterans. It was marvelous to really see. Uh, no, no presidency at Teta by Indoba. Kutaini ngadi nise gule mego yeza supplements. Nise nakita nonke. Si atemba. Ubu Kobe really inspires a lot of other young people uh, that are here. We are quite, actually quite pleased and humbled uh, with this kind of work that this family has done. The leadership uh, uh, soon realized then that it should, however, direct other comrades in different strata of our society. Hence, we had freedom fighters in sport and in churches, in education institutions, and in performing arts. And Comrade Gavin and his family found themselves within that. Ikamalake, Comrade Gavin, Liza Ufagwa, Gwimbali, Yamakama, Abalulegleo, Gweli Pondo, Nagweli Lizwe, Afana, no Tata, Yusuf, Loga, Dokaya, Majola, O Tata, Uramare, O Tata, Usemram, Sami, and many, O Tata, Utsotsobe, and no Tata, Uteni Jordan. Because of the contribution and selflessness that they have done, we are indeed hugely indebted to this family, a family that has donated. Uh, all their sons. You have heard uh, Comrade Valencia speaking uh, the, the Ronis and Chiquis uh, to contribute in the struggle for the liberation of our people. There is only one fault I found on Comrade Gavin's life, and many of us have the same fault in our journey of life. Comrade Gavin's allowed the wolves in, uh, in sheep's uh, clothing to get closer in his life. And we have seen how wolves would, uh, who came into Comrade Gavin's life pretending to be harmless revealed their true colors. It is sad lesson for all of us to learn that in our quest to be a united and a non-racial nation, we must know who is truly on our side. Most of the time, our true allies are those who never sold out during the difficult times and not overnight Democrats who use the convenience of our democratic victory to act as if they share the same beliefs and values with us. How I wish, uh, uh, Comrade Gavin, you would have left uh, us having uh, cleared and uh, put uh, things into correct perspective in the Judge Zondo Commission. But those who are actually still alive and who, those who know more with the work that you have done, indeed, they must just do what is right and put things into correct perspective in that commission. Let me leave you, uh, fellow mourners and the family, uh, with a few words that are found in the uh, Timothy 4, verse 6, which read, and I quote, For I am now ready to be offered, and the time of my departure is at hand. I have fought a good fight, I have finished my course, and I have kept the faith. Henceforth there is laid up for me a crown of righteousness, which the Lord, the righteous judge, shall give me at that day, and not to me only, but unto all, unto all them also to love his appearing." Close quote. Uh, rest in peace, uh, Comrade uh, Gavin. May your activist revolutionary soul rest in peace.
if by can be, Comrade Gavin is leaving Port Elizabeth at a time when Amakins are in control of our society, at a time when gangsters are doing as they wish, at a time when this very important part of our province and the country is rapidly degenerating. We're calling everyone to come on board, turn around the situation. This is an economic hub of entire province. We can't grow the economy of this province if this area is not functioning properly. Thank you very much. Uh, comrades, please, if you don't understand the lyrics of the song, just sh shake your head. Bonagali Senje, that you are with us. Egugu te tambo, egugu te mak, egugu te tambo. Wagugu te tambo, ya gogo te hema. Wagugu te tambo, ya gogo te hema. Sagugu te tambo. Yalfuna Manel Kwijo, Abandu Balkule, Kakuse. 1986, Italy leadership took a decision that we are going to build shacks at Greenacres. Abandu Basuka Kwazake, Abandu Basuka New Pride, Soweto on Sea, Bapumin Dulumba, Bepete Ipali Namatangi to build shacks at Greenacres. El kwicho keli ne history ndi funa indoba kani likula niyazi indoba lisuke la pina keli zempe kaula keli zempe kaula keli zempe kaula keli Amanda, comrades in Glenia Clasha, Sakutungo, Menkulu, Si Pagamise, Oyasagbang, Mongameli, way to Apeliswe, no Mongameli, Elizwe. Amanda, this is the man on Gafunuwa Zeswagoni, because he has been around here. Kayala Pepa, Ugi Kayala, Lesbian. Eastern Cape, Lelinye la Makaya Ake, Waisak Bangu Mongameli Njikobe Ndichilo, We African National Congress, Umongameli Welizwe, Utata, Ujaizete, Zuma, Ula Papaka Tukwe Tuna Mtanjas, Nalo Nyueba, Pikela Mongameli Usondele, Utete Nabandu Basa Eastern Cape. Ozolo Mone, O, Solomon, 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 when the soldier, Oh,
Thank you very much, uh, Director of the Program, for the opportunity the wife and children and the entire family of Watson, wife to our comrades and friend, Comrade Gavin, indeed to the relatives as well, Premier of the province, the comrade Mabuyana, and the entire leadership that is here today to come and bid farewell to this very extraordinary comrade. I would like also to recognize Dinpo Ani, the wife of our late Chris Ani, who is with us here. <clears throat> and indeed, business leaders, and all important persons and all mourners who are with us here today. We are here to bid a farewell to Comrade Govan and to convey our condolences to the wife and the entire Watson family, to this extraordinary man who comes from an extraordinary family. Coming from this province, which at times is referred to as one of the mothers of the African National Congress. But this particular city, 
which is known as the home of the African National Congress. Comrades, we have heard almost everything about Comrade Govern. What type of a person he has been, what type of a family he comes from, what contribution they have made in the struggle to liberate South Africa, and what contribution <clears throat> has been disrupted in so far as Comrade Govern is concerned, as he make the contribution to develop this country. I had an opportunity to be invited by him <clears throat> to where his operations are. He wanted me to come and see what he was doing. I was still the president of the country then, very interested to see what are we doing in terms of changing South Africa to be what we wanted to be. I was amazed by the operations, so advanced with almost every answer to the challenges we have. And I was very happy to see him after a while a comrade making such visible contribution in our country, and a brother, and a friend. He's the only one I remember <clears throat> who has come to my village, to my little home called Nkandla. <clears throat> just to see how this encounter that was talked about looked like. He wanted to see it for himself, and we had a good time. Director of the program, I was introduced to the Watson family and indeed the brothers by one of my leaders, Comrade Pilusom Zwai. That is to meet them, to see them, having heard their name before. Mzwai, who among other things headed the intelligence of the African National Congress, <clears throat> he was bowing out of that position I had been identified to occupy that position. He had to introduce me, therefore, to a number of <clears throat> sectors, units, everything that had to do with intelligence. And indeed, when he introduced me, he said, I have a unit of comrades in the Eastern Cape who are operating very effectively. There were other comrades who worked under Mzwai who then had to operate under me in exile, who I think were servicing these comrades more directly. And firstly, <clears throat> when we met these comrades, <clears throat> surprised me. But bullies, the thoughts, they were kaba, mall, virgin, 
Bayakobi Sanji. <laughs> Only to find the intermingled English and Kosa as they were explaining very complicated things. And I had to work with them for a long time. And these comrades were one of the most advanced unit in terms of reporting on intelligence. And of course, as I worked with them, I came to know these were not, were not just recruited <clears throat> at the time. They've been members of the African Nation Congress for a long time. And they were operating underground. They were, in fact, recruited <clears throat> to this specialized work of the ANC by comrades who knew them. And indeed, it did not take long for me to appreciate the quality of work that they were giving. Very incisive in terms of the information. One of the advantage was that they could move <clears throat> without any thinking about the color line, across the color line. But also, as business people, they were able to get the kind of information that because of the color line, other units and other comrades could not get. And therefore, they were very important in the life of the African National Congress Intelligence <clears throat> Department. It did not take long to see how committed these comrades were to the struggle to liberate South Africa, but also to the policies of the African National Congress. But they were also a unique unit because they could put their additional point of view in a manner that would not ignore. <clears throat> they said more than any other time, Comrade Ronnie, because he was very <clears throat> agile in movement <clears throat> and very good in giving reports, written and unwritten, very well. They became the big asset of the African National Congress. What you said as an attempt to their lives, <clears throat> we saw it in action. When Comrade Ron was in Botswana in a hotel, an enemy operator came to kill him. Ronnie being Ronnie, he stood up and dealt with that enemy, removed the gun from his hand, and overpowered him, and therefore succeeded <clears throat> to leave. In other words, the enemy hated this family to a point that they wanted them to be killed. And I believed when we got our freedom in 1994, I thought that we had passed that chapter. We had passed that chapter. It was now time to rebuild South Africa. And I'm saying this because... <clears throat> 
I've become very worried in the manner in which many comrades are dying these days. Particularly knowing as I do how some intelligence organizations operate. And I'm hoping that <clears throat> the investigation will indeed prove us wrong, who are worried. The report that uh, the family gave me has a lot of gaps in the manner in which Comrade Govan was found and how he died. And since the investigation is still ongoing, I hope there will be a report that will satisfy all of us. There are comrades who have died very suddenly. <clears throat> who are seen to be some obstacle in one form or the other. Perhaps some time will come <clears throat> for some truths to come out. There are comrades I would not want to count who have left us very mysteriously. And I hope <clears throat> Comrade Govan is not be counted among those that were cleverly removed from the scene. And I know that uh, <clears throat> Comrade Garvin has died at a point when <clears throat> his name has been raised. And indeed, as I've been formed, he has been preparing to go to the commission to respond to a number of allegations that have been made against him so that he could clear some of the matters that needed to be cleared. And I hope perhaps those in the company will also have an opportunity to do so. We are living in a, an era that is very strange, that those who fought for our freedom and therefore were vilified by the apartheid system And those who are not vilified, they've been turned the other way around. Those who were fighting and sacrificed everything to bring about freedom are today made the worst people to look in the country. And our media plays a big role in this, is a narrative that has been deliberately shaped to undermine our freedom. <clears throat> now, <clears throat> I just want to say one or two things, I don't want to say many things because some of the comrades who are being taken away are comrades who are very close to me in terms of the work and understanding of where we come from and where we're going. There is something I think we did not watch that South Africa is a very strategic country, geographically. For the history 
that has seen men driving machines across the seas and oceans, it has become very important. at the level of global economy and global politics, South Africa is very important. And therefore, there are people who have felt South Africa could not be allowed not to be under their control. And that means they spend time identifying those who, whom they believe are an obstacle. And they are hated. And they are always looked at to be people who needed to be removed. <clears throat> and I hope we are not dealing with that case here particularly because the Watson family have been under the spotlight of our enemies for many years, and it had not stopped. Hence, <clears throat> suddenly, we got <clears throat> to the stage where a commission was used to further deal with this family. And I'm saying, I'm hoping very sincerely that there will be <clears throat> explanations of many of the things. And I think uh, Comrade Premier has made an important point, <clears throat> which I don't want to repeat. But I think it is important to understand, particularly to those who are comrades, that uh, <clears throat> our effort to liberate our country is not yet over. You should know that what led us into negotiations more directly and very specific was because of the global changing of the balance of forces. When the socialist world disappeared, the world had changed in a particular way. <clears throat> Apartheid South Africa could no longer use the excuse that if we allowed the ANC to take over the country, we would be allowing the communists. That was an argument they used to persuade Western countries not to dump them, to support them. But the time came when we had to negotiate. Now when we're negotiating, I think <clears throat> there are some of the things, or finer but very important things we did not watch at the time. Perhaps we took things for granted. For an example, <clears throat> when we're negotiating, or to put it more correctly, before we negotiated, the apartheid system had a problem to deal with. What has it asked itself a question? And we did not know this. What are we going to do with the enemy agents that are within the liberation movement? And that issue was avoided in the debate, I mean in the negotiations, probably because it's a sensitive issue. And if I don't say it, <clears throat> Who will say it? <clears throat> we believed that when we negotiated and concluded everything, everything was over. 
And therefore, even the issue of pursuing the enemy agents was no longer the issue. Because what else will they be informing on if the war has ended of liberation? Very simplified logic we did not know. <clears throat> we negotiated in good faith. But what did the apartheid authorities do? They did not want to hand over or to leave alone their agents. They worked with their friends, other countries, big countries, and one country in particular. They had an agreement to hand over those agents to an enemy. This was their country because we are now going to all come together. And they handed over their agents with their files to particularly, the majority of them, to a particular country so that they will continue to erode our freedom, to undermine the government, to do everything so that they will claim the ANC is failing to run the country. And in the process of that, as we negotiate, the ANC had to dismantle its intelligence structures, an organization, as we call it in Bogoto, those who were going to the army, those who were going to the police, had to abandon the membership of the ANC. And yet, <clears throat> our enemy, was consolidating that force to the hands of a country outside. That continued to work. And we came to know later that therefore an element that we thought had come to an end was in fact transferred, is in fact operating. That country has two files. A file from apartheid, apartheid, apartheid time to these agents and a new file for that country. Why this? It's because South Africa is very important. Important at times that we don't understand. And therefore, people who have been active, who are known, it has made the situation not to be safe for them. And I wish and hope that Comrade Gavan has not been a victim of that approach. I hope. And I hope the investigations will clarify this matter. There are reasons why I say this. And I don't want to go any further. But South Africa is a strategically important country, geographically, politically, economically, globally. <laughs> but also circumstances have changed, comrades, and I think it's important to know this. We fought for a national liberation country. The important word is national. And that is what united us, the national liberation. And that was done in 1994. That was a national interest of all of us. But once apartheid was removed and therefore the national 
issuers out. That reduced <clears throat> this pooling power <clears throat> of coming together and unite. And I don't want to go further what then came to its place. But perhaps in order to leave you unclear, the class interests emerged. And that's where we are. And that's why a person who is your comrade, who was ready to die with you, today that comrade would kill you for personal interests. It is a point we need to be aware of, we who love this country and love South Africa. This comrade <clears throat> was a non-racial comrade, believed in non-racialism, had no color. For those who secretly took our citizens and made them agents of other countries, he remains <clears throat> a different kind of a person in their eyes. We still need to wake up, particularly we, the African National Congress, unite, and I absolutely believe we need to work very hard to ensure that this country does not disintegrate <clears throat> into something we never thought of because of it's important and because we don't understand how important South Africa is globally. <clears throat> this family has suffered because of its political clarity and commitment to the freedom and democratic government of this country and their contribution particularly Comrade Gavin, who was in the leader of this. And I wish we can learn from here that we need to address things differently. If we don't, we're all going to die one by one. Those who are known to be problematic in different ways. Heart attack, I now know it can be induced. I have been poisoned myself by those forces. I'm not talking something that <clears throat> I don't know. And I thought at this point, because Comrade Gavin has been Andy the Watson, has been an important element in the setup of the South African country where there has been racism. These <clears throat> managed to understand South Africa as a real rainbow nation and worked for it. And it is important to make this point. If you lower your guards, <clears throat> you might be in trouble. If you were sitting in another country, you hear that there is a person called in South Africa, Jacob Zuma. You will believe he's the biggest criminal. He has been labeled the most corrupt person but nobody has even given a teaspoon that is told anywhere. It's a narrative that has been created deliberately to say those who may know things need to be rubbished so that they look like criminals, corrupt, etc. When I was uh, <clears throat> appearing and I've not yet finished, in the commission, in the commission. <clears throat> I told a story of a plan that was hashed for me in 1990. 
that has been deepening in terms of implementation. In fact, Bendi Kapezul, Bendinga Teti Namatumbu Ayo, Bendi Kapezul. For me, it is absolutely important that it's not yet over. <clears throat> but I thought it is important to make you aware. Um, I would like to say thank you to the Watsons family. I've worked with them. They are like my brothers. And I'm happy that <clears throat> The children of the brothers are as their fathers. We are part of this family. <clears throat> I would like to say, as we say goodbye to Comrade Govan, you must be consoled by the fact that here lies a real comrade, a soldier of our struggle. A comrade who understood the need to liberate South Africa, but also understood the need to build South Africa to be a better country that takes care of its citizens. A real democrat, revolutionary. In practice, not just in theory, as we have heard. We like to say, Lalan Ganga Muzi Oga Watson, Sigunyanan, Siva Lentungu, Jengoba Nani Niva, Gumfoetulo, Gumfoetulo, Kabafoetulaba, Nabota, the way to Naboma. Owen Umsebens Nwenzi. Got a says chong wabang kuba benzoa bafun ze noma balandele o tataba kuba send elenzel is yamba send isafuna amatota na matota na boma it's not good to feel in our own country we are not safe. We need to feel we are safe and free. But those matters are matters needing the leaders to help us feel we are safe. I want to say to Comrade Govan, farewell, Comrade. You made your contribution. You left too early for us. I always feel very bad to say goodbye to people who are younger than me, instead of them saying to us who are older, Goodbye, you have done your work. But this indeed is a comrade who made a contribution in the organization, the African National Congress, and in the country. And we'll always remember him and remember his family. Farewell, comrade. Amanza! Awe tu umshenwa mshenwa umshenwa mshenwa umshenwa miwe baba. Awe tu umshenwa mshenwa umshenwa mshenwa umshenwa miwe baba. Awe tu umshenwa mshenwa. Um shenewa, um shenewa, um shenewa, mi we baba. Um 
This time, ladies and gentlemen, uh, um, for for those for those of you who would know, as it is spoken very fondly here, is that uh, and I'm going to request that there is that there's some level of restraint from Amakaban, where at that time that Gavin enjoyed, respected, and cherished very much. At this time, ladies and gentlemen, I'm going to request Pastor Francis to come to the fore. As Pastor Francis um, comes over, I'm sure most of us will have this program. You would realize that in, on the inside there are hymns. We are raising Pastor Francis whilst we sing How Great Thou Art. For those of us who do not know, the, the, the hymn is right here. Please uh, feel uh, free to join the organist as we play the hymn. Thank you very much.
Can we clap our hands for the Lord? Hallelujah. God is good. And all the time. God is good. And all the time. Molueni. You may take your seat, brothers and sisters. Hallelujah. My name is uh, Francis. I'd like to thank the program director for this opportunity uh, to share the word of God on this occasion. I'd like to also um, acknowledge the Watson's family, our former president, uh, the premier of the province, the mayor, uh, all the officials here present, um, the employees of African Global. Um, uh, greetings to all of you. Amen. I'm going to share shortly uh, a scripture that we're going to uh, think together on this scripture in the book of Job, chapter 14, verse 1 uh, through 2. The Bible reads, How frail is humanity! How short is life! How full of trouble! We blossom like a flower and then wither. Like a passing shadow, we quickly disappear. Father, we bless your word on this difficult occasion of Father God. But we thank you that you are the God who has been here before we came. You created us, oh Father God. You know us. You know our going out and our coming in. We bless you, Father God, for our brother who has gone to be with you, O oh Lord. We thank you for these words that will come forth to encourage us to Encourage our hearts and our lives, O oh Father. For the glory of your name, we pray that you bless this word and that your spirit will touch our hearts and that your spirit will comfort us and comfort the family, O oh Lord. For the glory of your name, in Jesus' mighty name I pray, and everyone said amen. 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 We all know that the book of Job is a profound book, a profound work on faith. The book is started with a prologue um, which pretty much portray or pictures or gives us an overview, an idea of what uh, Job was going to go through without the knowledge of Job himself. And it shows us also that the spiritual dimension that the divine or God was aware of whatever that Job went through. And it also closes with an epilogue where we see God answering to Job and also teaching us some lessons out of uh, this book. You know, as I say, the main body of this composition is cast as a series of speeches that alternate between Job and men of conventional wisdom. And also we see Job himself questioning and asking questions why he was going through whatever he was going through. We know that Job was a devoted servant of God, but now we see him afflicted with losses, especially the loss of his children. You know, you will agree with me that you may lost everything, but when it comes to your family, it's very painful. So we see Job here losing his family. So he agonizes over the cause of his plight, and while his friends and counselors confidently provide inadequate reasons, basically they turned against him, they turned against Job, even pointing fingers at him. We as the family of Konkeli, as friends and employees and prayer partners and business partners, all of us have been struggling with this situation of the loss of our beloved brother, our beloved father, our beloved grandfather, uncle, and friend. We've been asking why to God. We've been asking how. We've been asking what, how come. Why did this happen? How did this happen? We've been asking all these questions. And many others have come with the human's wisdom the conventional wisdom to try and explain the whole situation based on the human perception and the conventional wisdom like Job's friend. 
And in the middle of the questions that Job was, was asking and in the middle of the things that his friends were saying, so Job caught a glimpse, you know, he caught an understanding of what man is like. He got an understanding before even God had answered him. And Job says in verse 1 uh, and 2 of chapter 14, he says that humanity is frail, fragile, that life is short and also full of troubles. He says life blossoms like flower today and tomorrow it's no more. And that's our lives. We are here today, but tomorrow we are no more. The truth is, death will come from a, for every human being one day. Hallelujah. Now, in the end, God himself responds to Job by paraphrasing his answer. He said to Job that, Job, let me be God and you remain royal. Just trust me. He says, have faith in me no matter what. No matter what it is that you have gone through, what I'm calling upon you is to put your trust in me. You don't need to understand all the things that you've been going through. All I want from you is just allow me to be God. Hallelujah. And keep faith in me. Keep trusting me. And as the composition of the book reveals, the issue is not pretty much of cause and effect. The core issue of the book lies with the nature of faith. Job experienced all that he experienced just because of his faith. Are you with me? The aims of most sections in this book is teaching us, one, to show that neither the events of life nor their reasons are what they may appear to be. And secondly, it's to create a deepened personal faith in God. And thirdly, it's to demonstrate the imperfections of human wisdom. And the most, the key lesson here is that the control of the world's order continues to belong to God. God controls everything. He knows where to set limits. He knows where to say, you can only go this far. Are you with me? So it's to know that the world order continues to belong to God. Though one should be prepared to go through pain, suffering, even believers, but Job's patience, endurance, and steadfast Fastness became an example to early Christians, even to us today. We are encouraged to trust God through thick and thin. Hallelujah. So Job understands that man's life is short. It blossoms like flower, and then it withers. Like a passing shadow, we quickly disappear. We are no more. And also, times of trouble will come during this lifetime. But one thing we need to keep in mind is that in the midst of it all, God is in control. And he wants us to trust him through the process. He wants us not to rely on human's wisdom, but to rely on what the scriptures say. Look into the scripture of the spiritual dimension. Because death has no victory over us. Jesus overcame death, as the Apostle Paul says in 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verse 40, uh, 54 to 58. It says, then when our dying bodies, meaning when our present bodies have been transformed into bodies that will never die, this scripture will be fulfilled. Death is swallowed up in victory. O oh, death, where is your victory? O oh, death, where is your sting? And goes on to say, but thank be to God, he gives us victory over sin and death through our Lord Jesus Christ. 
So in reality, for us believers, as we know, Brother Gavin was a believer. For us believers, Jesus overcame death. Hallelujah. And what gives death its power, meaning sin. Jesus gave us victory over sin and death. And when we die in this body, we will rise into a different body that will live with the Lord eternally. The Apostle Paul continues to say in, in, in 1 Thessalonians chapter 4, verse 16 through 18, he says, For the Lord himself will come down from heaven with a commanding shout, with the voice of the archangel, and with the trumpet call of God. First, the Christians who have died or the dead in Christ will rise from their graves. Then, together with them, we who are still alive and remain on the earth will be caught up in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air. Then we will be with the Lord forever. He says, so encourage each other with these words. So the Apostle Paul exhorts the believers to encourage themselves with these words that the Lord will come down from heaven. And that the dead in Christ will rise from their graves, and the believer who is still believing will meet the Lord in the air, in the air, and then we will live with him forever. Brother Gavin will rise again. Brother Gavin will rise again. We will meet together with the Lord and live together with the Lord forever. There will be no more death, no more tears. No more pain, no more suffering. And that's what we are looking forward to. And in closing, in the middle of our pain, in the middle of this time of sorrow, we need to remember that our days here on earth is short. Like flowers will blossom and wither and die and go to be with the Lord. But while we are still alive, we need to make every day count by keeping our faith in God and having faith that God is in control even when it looks like we are on our own. As family, we need to remain united and continue with the legacy of Brother Gavin, the legacy that he left. And as employees and, and leadership of the organization, we need to continue working with the spirit of unity and excellence towards the goal that Brother Gavin set together with you. Continue to impact the people, continue to impact communities, continue to impact cities and nations, because God is with us. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Before I pray, a few words that I'd like to say, just one minute. Mr. Gavin, my father, I just want to say goodbye. You showed me the love of a true father. You called me while I was away, but when I came back, I found that you are no more. You were a shepherd for this flock, as you always said that Bosasa was a church. Now you are gone. Who will be the shepherd over this flock? But it is well, because we know where you have gone. You've gone to a better place. It is well with your spirit, and it is well with us. Go well, my father. On behalf of all the prayer warriors and the elder bat team, we say goodbye. We love you, and we will continue to love you and pray toward the legacy that you have left. Amen. I would love for us to stand up and sing this song, this hymn, in our booklet. It is well with my soul. It is well with Brother Gavin where he has gone. It is well with us as well. Because we know 
he has just gone ahead of us and he has gone to a better place. Amen. We'll just sing um, one verse. We'll just sing one verse because of time. Amen. Father, we thank you and we bless you for your words. We thank you, Father God, for the remaining of the program. We pray, O oh Lord, as we're going to lay our brother to rest, may you comfort the family. May you comfort, Father God, all of us that have been close to him, O oh Lord. And may you strengthen us for the glory of your name. In Jesus' mighty name I pray, amen. Thank you very much, ladies and gentlemen. We've come to uh, almost at the end of um, our program. And to render a quick vote of thanks is uh, Jared Watson. Uh, Jared? Afternoon. Uh, just very briefly, a few people would like to thank for being here and for assisting. Uh, President Zuma, first and foremost, uh, he honors us by being here today, and we honor him. Uh, the Premier of the province, the Mayor and all the support staff and the police and everyone who's come on board to help us through this time, Dimpo Hani, wife of the late Chris Hani, a close family friend, we send one to join your husband today. Members of the ANC who've attended to support us, the SACP, members of the ANC Women's League, Sanko, all the sports fraternities that have come to pay their respects today, the MKMVA, especially uh, ben, uh, Benson Filia, people of Ebai, all those who have traveled from far and wide to be here and support, activists from around the country here today and from afar, those who have been providing support for the family over this time and those working here today, members of the media, Comrade Charles uh, Nakula, Sue Gillespie uh, from First Avenue Funeral Home. Uh, he didn't want to be mentioned, but Andy Lungisa has been very supportive of this period, and we want to honor him. Uh, Abel Esterhazen and the Bocadillo staff, the ANC Ward 7, uh, and uh, Ngeba Faku, who attended the home yesterday to hoist the flag for honoring our family. The Busasa chairman, Joe Gomede, for his tireless efforts in assisting Gavin and the greater Busasa staff. Uh, Papa Leshabane, for everything he's uh, done in pulling together these two events. Cecilia uh, Seopela, we'd just like to offer hi him condolences over this period. It's not just Gavin, he mourns this year. His brother has passed this year, his mother has passed this year. We remain his family. Uh, Ronnie Valence and Cheeky, we see your efforts, 45 years of struggle it continues. Archie M. Kele, Kevin Wakeford, the Greater Board of Directors from Bosasa, the employees from Bosasa, we thank you for your efforts over the years. We thank you for your continued efforts over this time. We stand with you. Kusta Jack, 
for kind words this morning and the family and all those who have supported us over this period. Thank you very much. Great stuff. Thanks, Jared. Ladies and gentlemen, we've come to the end of our formal proceedings here today. Thank you very much for your attention. Thank you, thank you very much for your attendance. Um, this is how it's going to work out from here on. Um, is the choir here? Good. Um, the choir will, same procession as it came in. The choir, the board of directors, the family, and the poor bearers and then the leadership of the African National Congress, and then we can all follow from there. The family has agreed that everyone who would like to attend to the burial site is free to do so, including members of the media. If you so wish to be at the burial site, you are more than welcome to, to attend. At the end of the proceedings at the burial site, we all come back here where refreshments will be served. Thank you very much, and thank you for allowing me to steer this program. Um, and we can, I, again, as we... Better side is uh, Forest Hill. Forest Hill, yeah. Thank you very much. Um, was that matters? Would request everyone to stand as we usher given out to his final resting place. Thank you very much.